Hey guys, Gorth here. This is part two in planetary interaction. We're going to be focusing on manufacturing planets, specifically high volume manufacturing planets. You can take some of these same concepts for low volume manufacturing planets if you want, but you really don't have to try too hard for a low volume setup. Um, the way I would uh, take a look at low volume would be you have less than 20 planets that are producing your P2 products, high volume would be more than 20 planets. Uh, so in part one I showed how to set up a planetary colony in an efficient manner in order to extract enough resources to create a P2 product and again aiming at being as lazy as possible to where you only go to the planet to pick up the P2 goods about once every week and a half to two weeks or so. Um, in that video we did discuss a little bit about the EVE University planetary commodities website. Uh, again it's it's pretty important to understand how this works. I'm not going to go through all that here but I am going to reference some notes from this website in order to show you what we're doing now. So let's assume that we are going to make uh, biocells, it's a P2 product from precious metals and biofuels. Nanites, again a P2 product from reactive metals and bacteria. If we've set up our planets to produce those P2s, we're now going to need to set up a single planet to manufacture P3s out of those products. So biocells plus nanites is going to give us the transcranial microcontrollers. What I'm specifically running with is 16 planets producing biocells, 16 planets producing nanites. Because they use different resources for the P2s, I can actually just run it off of 16 planets, but have different tunes with different command centers on the same planet. So one tune can be producing biocells on the planet another tune can be producing nano nanites on the planet and it works out just fine but as you can see even if you're going to do it condensed like and very efficient like that you are going to need at least 16 planets if you're not efficient you'll need around 30 to 32 planets so this is high volume when you have that many planets every week and a half to two weeks you're picking up a shit ton of p2 product what do you do with all that P2 product? You take it to a manufacturing planet and that's what I'm going to show you here. Again it's high volume. So the design is a little different. When you uh, start a manufacturing planet it needs to be on either a barren or a temperate planet. It does not matter which. And it doesn't matter where you place your good old command center. The nice thing about that. So this design is probably about a fourth generation design for me um, aimed at being able to drop off as much P2 product as possible again you know trying to get this to be a, a bit lazy here and make as much ISK as I can without doing a whole lot of work so this system doesn't back up very much at all it will handle about two weeks worth of P2 product from that 16 planet setup or 32 planet setup however you have that running the basic gist of this is it's much like building a regular planetary colony when it comes to routing the the makeup the specific uh, design here again it's about efficiency and volume so you'll notice to start with we have two spaceports why two spaceports because it takes two different types of P2 products to make one P3 product. So if we look at this spaceport, the easiest thing to do is look at the routing. The spaceport does nothing but handle biocells and it routes those biocells to every single one of these processors. This other spaceport, if we take a look at its routes, handles nothing but nanites. Again, it routes nanites to every single one of these processors. Now, the processors you have, you might imagine, they've got to be advanced processors 
right? So we have, you know, is that six, twelve, sixteen advanced processors on this planet. The planet's also got a couple storage devices on the wings, and a couple uh, storage units up on the top here. So, what are the ones up on the top? Let's take a look at their routes. Incoming transcranial microcontrollers. But notice this one only has so many routes. There's definitely not 16 routes there. We go take a look at the other one. Same thing. Only so many routes, but they are all incoming routes for transcranial microcontrollers. The way this design works is the storage container, storage unit, storage device, whatever you want to call it on the top left takes the the product from these eight advanced processors. The storage container on the right takes P3 product from these eight advanced processors. So what are these storage containers for on the wings? They are for overload of P2 product. So for example, this storage container, I'm going to take a look at an empty one here. This storage container can hold 10,000 cubic meters. So I'm going to bring over 10,000 cubic meters worth of nanites and drop it into that storage container. For this other one, again, it's for biocells, so I'm going to drop off 10,000 cubic meters of biocells. As soon as you make that drop off, both of the spaceports begin routing the products, the P2 products, to the advanced processors. So you'll load up all your advanced processors right away. But then you're going to have like 9,000 cubic meters left just sitting in the spaceports waiting for the next cycle to start. Well, that's a little bit inefficient. So what you do at that point in time is you do an expedited transfer to a storage container. So again, when I drop off 10,000 cubic meters of nanites into this spaceport, it'll instantly load up all the advanced processors. The next thing I do is then expedite transfer that 9,000 cubic meters of nanites that's left over into this storage container. The storage container can hold 12,000 cubic meters, so we're all good there. The storage container has nanite routes. Notice it has just as many as the spaceport this storage container will route nanites to every single one of these 16 processors. Same deal goes with the biocell spaceport on the left. If I drop off 10,000 cubic meters of biocells, it'll populate through routing all of these processors, and then we're going to have about 9,000 cubic meters of biocells left. You want to then expedite transfer those, to the storage container on the left wing. The storage container on the left wing takes 12,000 cubic meters, so it's totally fine, and it will have routes for biocells outgoing to every one of these processors. So if you can follow me here, if you just dropped off two giant ships full of P2 product, you've loaded up all your processors so they'll start working, your extra nanites will wind up in this storage container. Your extra biocells will wind up in that storage container. And then your space ports are going to be empty. Here's the key point. Go back and get a shit ton more of the P2 product and then bring it back. Bring back another 10,000 cubic meters of biocells and drop it into that space port. Bring back another 10,000 cubic meters of nanites, drop it into that space port. At that point in time, you've got around 10,000 cubic meters in each spaceport plus 9,000 sitting out in your wing storage container. Both the spaceport and the storage container have routes to all of these processors. So in effect you can load this production planet up or this manufacturing planet up with 19,000 cubic meters or more of any P2 product. So we would load this up with 19,000 cubic meters of biocells on the left hand side here, 19,000 cubic meters of nanites on the right, and then we would go away for like two weeks. 
when these processors, again, the uh, eight processors on the left here, are done making their P3 product, the transcranial microcontroller, they're all going to route it up to the storage container above them. Same thing with the eight processors on the right. When they're done making their transcranial microcontrollers, they're going to route them up to the storage container on the top right. The, again, these storage containers take 12,000 cubic meters, so this planet can store 24,000 cubic meters of transcranial microcontrollers. That, depending on the price, can be anywhere between 400 to 600 million ISK or more. Uh, some things to note about the design. For this storage container on the right to be able to route to this processor out on the far left corner, we have uh, a bit of a problem with routing. So if you think about this, it goes from storage container 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 5 and 6 hops you cannot route beyond six hops from a storage container, so we couldn't actually route to this processor. Same problem with our storage container out on the far left here. If we want to route to the advanced processor in the upper right corner, it's too many hops away, so we have to figure out how to get it there within six hops. That is what this route or link is for. So the route will actually go one, two, three, four instead of seven hops. Same thing with the other side. So that's the only reason that link is there. One other consideration with this design is that uh, horizontal routing, horizontal traffic, lateral traffic is going to be more intense because of going back and forth between the storage containers and the spaceports then it is going to be uh, vertically up to the P3 storage. So your horizontal links are going to need to be upgraded most likely. So this is an upgraded link. These little ones in between here are all upgraded links. Not a big deal. Again, this is for high volume planets only. If you have like, let's say you've got uh, you know, your main and your alt and you have nine planets you should set up four planets for one T P2 product, another four planets for another P2 product, and one planet for a manufacturing, you know, uh, production plants. And it really doesn't matter what your design is when you have such low volume like that. The basic concept is you need some advanced processors to create your P3 product. You only have to start worrying about efficiency in your production line and how you're going to handle like your supply chain of getting in all the P2 products in an efficient way. You only got to really worry about that from my experience when you get above 20 planets. By the time you hit 30 plus planets it's an absolute must or you'll waste too much time and you won't be out there you know blowing up other people's spaceships you'll be trying to figure out what to do with all this crap in PI. Whole lot cooler to just let the thing churn for like two weeks while you go shoot other people. All right, well, that's it for um, Manufacturing Planet. Quick, short video. Again, this um, fully assumes you understand routing. You know, like when you take a look at the routes inside of any advanced processor, this video fully assumes that you understand how to set up basic routing for uh, advanced processors. Cool. In the next video, I will show you another production planet where we're taking multiple P3 products and making one P4 product.